I'm honored this morning to introduce uh, Dover's Sustainability Fellow, Peter Franson. He hails from my alma mater, University of New Hampshire, and is pursuing a Master's in Environmental Engineering degree. Um, Peter has brought great work ethic and personality to the planning department. He has integrated with the team very well, has brought forward excellent ideas and produced insightful analysis for us. I very much enjoyed my time working with Peter throughout the project and really appreciate the thoughtful questions he has posed uh, throughout the entire process. I'm really looking forward to using his work to further drive energy progress in Dover and supporting the Energy Commission and their goals and the City Council's broader goals. And I'm really confident that we're going to stay connected for, for years to come. So thanks so much, Peter, for all of your excellent work this summer. And with that, I'll hand it over to you. Thanks, Jackson. Um, so for this presentation, I kind of wanted to focus on um, more so my reflection of this experience rather than a data heavy presentation. Um, so I am going to make an analogy, I suppose, uh, to a hobby that I've recently taken up um, and the parallels that I kind of found between the two. Um, so I recently took up climbing, rock climbing, um, and went for my first outdoor climbing experience this summer. Um, I didn't consider myself a pure beginner, but I would definitely say I was inexperienced when I started. Um, I only had my basic tools for climbing, my shoes, my harness, and my willingness to participate. Um, and while hiking to this outdoor wall in Rumney, New Hampshire, I felt excited and nervous, didn't really know what to expect. And we finally got to the climbing zone and stood below this giant slab of stone and was like, how am I going to do this? This looks impossible. Um, way out of the possibility of the experience that I came with. And we kept walking around and I saw other walls and routes, um, which upon closer inspection revealed uh, footholds, cracks, crimps, and um, the routes upward as impossible as they seemed uh, became more visible the longer that I looked at it. So I was really nervous about the existing infrastructure of bolts and clips. Um, I wondered why I should trust something just because it was there and put by someone. Uh, my friends answered endless questions that I had about all of the monitoring and the upkeep that went into replacing these bolts, clips, and anchors that were going to ensure my safety. Um, I also asked questions about the tools that we came with to further inform the knowledge that I had gained about them um, and how to use them correctly and safely. I quickly learned that the climbers that I came with were really quite experienced and had so much knowledge to provide and formal training of their own. Um, they made me feel really safe and truly knew the limits of their own knowledge and training. Um, the day in general was a mixture of successes and challenges and nerves and thrills. I climbed things that were easy and fun for me, and I attempted to climb routes that were extremely challenging and scary. Um, I walked away from that experience with a lot to reflect on, and I'm going to kind of talk a little bit about how that relates to my experience with this fellowship. Um, the parallels that I saw there were that in the beginning, I didn't really know what to expect. I was excited and nervous. I felt inexperienced and inadequate but confident and knowledgeable enough to figure it out with the tools and the willingness that I had. Um, the first few days I was intimidated and overwhelmed by the project scope and data sets, but regardless, I just started working and understanding what I had. Every day, every question that I asked, um, they all further expanded my knowledge and my understanding of the tools available to me and these potential pathways to achieve the 100% renewable energy goal that the city of Dover has. Um, I learned a lot from other municipalities, articles that I read, and professionals that I met with. Uh, the strategy was continuously adapted, tweaked, and improved as my own personal knowledge deepened. And I just felt so comfortable asking so many questions. I felt so supported and eventually felt extremely confident in delivering the valuable information um, that came out of this project. Uh, next slide, please. So <clears throat> to further break it down, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about the strategy for doing this. And um, I think this first, the first step in that strategy is to observe the terrain, 
uh, familiarize yourself with it, doing a lot of baseline research that will help you form some foundational understanding of whatever project you may have. I think this is pretty universal to all of these sustainability projects, but um, especially in mine, getting that foundational baseline knowledge was really important. Um, so really researching what's in front of you and understanding that kind of basic aspect, that foundational aspect. The second step was to truly understand the support system that you had, um, identifying the communities that would help support you and further your understanding and knowledge of the project, um, the scope and potential solutions to whatever you're trying to resolve. Um, identifying other helpful resources were also key. This is a really interconnected community being the sustainability community, but same with the climbing community. It's incredibly interconnected. There are so many ways to talk, um, open forums, word of mouth, published guides. Um, the resources are all there and uh, there are so many different ways that other people can challenge you and lift you up all at the same time. And the third step is to understand your tools. Um, the tools that you came with, the tools that you're learning about, and to just get started. Um, you'll learn so much from just starting if you really understand the tools that you have at your disposal, and you'll continue to adapt and grow with the tools that you acquire along the way. Um, and understanding that no strategy is perfect and or one-to-one -one transferable. Um, Putting knowledge into action reveals a good, what a good strategy or a bad strategy may be, um, but just your safe attempts um, project or they they move you to learn through the process. Um, so really important to use those tools and just just to try it out, just to get going, and you'll continue to adapt along the way. And it kind of um, forces you at the end. I didn't put this fourth step in, but um, this reflection process. I think is really crucial because it kind of almost sends you back to that first step and working through each of those steps again. Um, it's it's a constant cycle until you kind of have gotten to a point where you feel like you have a deliverable for your project and you can move on to another phase. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so really quick, just to talk about where Dover is in all of this and what came uh, with my project. Um, we got a really good baseline for understanding for the energy consumption in the municipality. Um, and the big, the big takeaways that I think we got from it are the, the top consumers and the really crucial next steps to take, um, and the, the, the ways to target, um, prior high priority items. Um, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. There's a lot of information in the report that I'm writing up, which will be public, and I'm really happy to talk about it. Um, but I think if if I had enough time, I could talk about it for a while. Um, but those are those are the big takeaways. Um, this is kind of one phase that has truly informed uh, the city of Dover um, for next steps in understanding their baseline. Um, and I guess to reflect on my own personal takeaways from this, I kind of mentioned, this is like a discussion, I guess, of my own personal takeaways, but the fact that the, the project or working on a project isn't going to be something where you just, you know what to do right away and you figure it out, you're constantly adapting, um, you may feel uninformed, or maybe not uninformed, but um, don't let the, any feelings of um, inadequacy or um, deter you from just trying. I mean, I learned so much along the way. Um, I did feel like I had a good amount of knowledge, but this really provided me with a lot more um, knowledge and tools to work with. And it was really cool to work for the city of Dover. I live in Dover, so it was really nice to be able to um, get an understanding of what's going on in Dover, what priorities are, and especially meeting with the um, Energy Commission. That was so cool. It's made up of volunteers for the city of Dover who are all concerned about all of this. And they, I made a presentation, um, gave them kind of the baseline, and I'll be meeting with them in next week. 
to go over the results. Um, so it was really cool to hear from them and see how excited they were to get some more understanding around the energy consumption. And I'm really looking forward to talking to them next week and um, discussing this more. So I'm happy to take any questions, I believe. It's wonderful. Thank you, Petter. That's fantastic. Thank you. Um, and I love the analogy. It's so great and so Thanks. apt. Um, we have, again, we're going to do just very brief clarifying questions in this space, which we'll just moderate and then open it up at the end. Um, so I'll um, invite Scott, our group co-advisor and co-pilot. Um, Scott, anything to ask or clarify for Petter? Thanks, Finn. Yeah. Yeah, Petter, thank you so much. Uh, I'm just I'm just wondering, you know, going through all this technical data and then having this personal exploration yourself, what have you learned from when you started to now about the importance of bringing these different parts of ourselves to the sustainability work? Um, I think, let's see. I think having this understanding that nothing gets resolved right away, it really is going to be a bit of a slog and an upward climb. There are a lot of barriers, as many tools as we have. Um, so just being flexible and adaptable and also understanding you're working with, um, especially in, for this project, I felt like we were pulling information from so many different sources and working with a lot of people to get the data that we needed. Um, so kind of be, both being flexible and patient with getting that information um, while still working through things that felt like it was going to contribute to the overall project. Um, flexibility was really key, but um, also this understanding that everyone's everyone's working on a project themselves. So um, flexibility and patience and just kind of keep going. I mean, um, yeah. Great words to live by, thank you. Yeah. Thank you.